ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. President Trump has been permanently suspended from Twitter. The social media giant calls it a move to prevent the incitement of more violence. Good evening, I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Kimberly Hunt. And tonight, the president faces the prospect of a second impeachment. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more on the resolution House Democrats say they plan to introduce as soon as Monday. Tonight, Twitter permanently suspending President Donald Trump's account, no longer allowing him to post on the site and reach his 88 million followers. The social network citing Wednesday's raid on the U.S. Capitol and concern of further incitement of violence as reasons for its decision. The president blasting the social media giant, releasing a statement saying, we will not be silenced. Twitter's move follows Facebook and Instagram, which also suspended the president's accounts indefinitely. Meantime, the flag over the Capitol flying at half-staff in honor of an officer who died in the riot, Brian Sicknick, a 12-year veteran of the force. Vice President Mike Pence offering his condolences and the White House issuing a statement, but silence on the slain officer from President Trump as calls for him to resign or be removed from office grow louder. Republican Senator Ben Sass telling CBS he would consider articles of impeachment. I believe the, pre the president has disregarded his oath of office. Alaskan GOP Senator Lisa Murkowski more direct, saying, I want him to resign. I want him out. And with just 12 days left in office before President-elect Joe Biden takes over, Democrats appear to be moving forward with impeachment. They've already written an impeachment resolution, a single article for, quote, incitement of insurrection, charging Trump with, quote, willfully inciting violence against the government by urging his followers to march to the Capitol. We're going to walk down and I'll be there with you because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. On the question of impeachment, Biden saying it's up to Congress. The quickest way that that will happen is us being sworn in on the 20th. When Biden is sworn in, President Trump won't be there, confirming on Twitter before his suspension he is not attending the inauguration. If Trump stays true to his word, he'll be just the fourth outgoing president not to attend his successor's inauguration. The last president to skip the ceremonial symbol of democracy, President Andrew Johnson, some 152 years ago. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. And San Diego's newest Congresswoman, Sarah Jacobs, tells ABC 10 News that she is co-sponsoring the articles of impeachment against the president. It is simply unconscionable that a sitting United States president would put members of an equal branch of government lives at risk because he wants to overturn the will of the American people. Jacob says it does not matter that the president's term is up in less than two weeks. She says impeaching the president is a simple matter of accountability. If we don't take a stand against what he did, it erodes our standing around the world to be able to tell other countries um, that they need to uphold rule of law and democracy. San Diego's other three Democratic congressmen have also called for President Trump's removal. The lone Republican, Daryl Issa, has said there should be a peaceful transfer of power to President-elect Biden. That's the mecca of the United States. And to see that that could be overran so quickly, it's, it's very scary for people. Well, the nation watched the events at the U.S. Capitol unfold live on television, the images evoking a range of emotions, shock and rage. ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura spoke with a psychologist on how to manage the pressure and ways to reset. From shock to anger to distress, the videos and images of mobs storming the Capitol Wednesday evoked a swell of emotions across the country. It's important for us to keep a perspective slower breathing down, stopping the dangerous thoughts. Dr. Corey Gonzalez is a licensed clinical psychologist. He says it's normal for people to be anxious after seeing or watching the events. In fact, many of his patients talk to him about it the next day. We're very disturbed by it. Uh, these images really affected their security. Seeing that, you know, the, the, our government and things that are very sacred in our life to help us feel safe, being overran by these people is very scary for a lot of people. He says it's also important to remember that everyone has been dealing with a lot in the past several months. Aside from political strife, people have been dealing with the pandemic and for some, financial uncertainty. Matters that threaten people's security in different ways and it adds up. There's a lot of people that perceive a lot of threats, so they really focus on what you can control, not what you can't control. 
He says it's important for people to take care of themselves if they are feeling anxious. He says people need to get plenty of sleep and exercise. He recommends meditating and talking about feelings. He also says people need to control their information intake and take negative images and events in dosages. We need to put it down, listen to music, watch movies, watch home movies, and get sort of grounded in ourselves. Because if we spend too much time on this stuff, it's going to affect our nervous system. It's going to affect our quality of life. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. New at 11, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says his plans for a nuclear-powered submarine are now complete. He said the plans are undergoing a final review. He shared the news while addressing the Congress of Ruling Workers Party of Korea. Kim also called the United States his nation's biggest enemy. He added North Korea must advance its precision attack capabilities on long range targets. This was apparently in reference to the U.S. mainland. I don't know how we, we kind of turned into the, the vaccine poster family. Members of one San Diego family have participated in three separate COVID-19 vaccine trials. And as ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us, the family says there was never a question about participating. The mom in this family first signed up for Moderna's vaccine trial last year, and months later, her sons followed her example with different vaccine makers. On Friday, 18-year-old Connor Sullivan spent most of his morning in Vista, participating in the Novavax COVID-19 vaccine trial. He received an injection but doesn't know if he got the actual vaccine or a placebo. I'm feeling fine. It's like I said earlier, I don't really feel anything outside of like a general like you know, a dead arm like you'd get after a regular flu shot. Connor has type 1 diabetes, putting him at greater risk. He's participated in clinical trials for diabetes before and says there was no question he wanted to participate in COVID-19 trials. Helping out in the medical community is something I've been passionate about since getting diabetes. He's not alone. His mom participated in the Moderna vaccine trial last July. It was a blind trial, but Leslie Sullivan felt flu-like symptoms on her second dose. Even though logically I know there's some risk to it, I didn't ever really feel like I was putting myself in any kind of jeopardy. Late last month, Sullivan's 15-year-old son Kyle decided he wanted to participate in Pfizer's trial after Pfizer started studying the vaccine on children to make sure it's also safe for them. The faster we can get these trials done for the teenage group, the faster the FDA will approve it. Kyle had symptoms after both doses that lasted about a day. Connor is due for his second Novavax injection in three weeks. A family that says they just wanted to do their part to find a way to end this pandemic. I'm, I'm super proud of both of them. You're not just getting vaccinated for yourself but it's for everybody else around you. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. Also tonight, the county is creating what it calls a vaccination superstation to help get our local health care workers vaccinated more quickly. The plan is to do as many as 5,000 vaccinations each day. The superstation will be at the Padres tailgate lot at Petco Park. Any health care worker in Tier 1A that can make an appointment Superstation opens Monday and will be open from 7 to 7, seven days a week. The San Diego City Attorney is going after the property owner and the organizer of a New Year's Eve rave in Miramar, which ended in a stage collapse. This is a look at where three people were injured during that warehouse party. Hundreds attended the event that was held in violation of public health orders. The City Attorney's Office filed a complaint against the property owner, Bradley Murray, and Charles Smith of Syndicate Entertainment. Among the allegations, numerous code violations, including that stage. The complaint alleges the site hosted numerous illegal events during the pandemic, including concerts and wrestling matches. The city attorney's office is seeking a shutdown of future events and what they describe as significant fines. The county announced another 4,500 COVID-19 cases today, that is a case record. Now it brings our total to 185,000. And 401 people are in local ICU beds with the disease. 33 more people have lost their lives to coronavirus.
That brings our death toll now to 1,771. And the U.S. is now reporting more coronavirus cases than at any other point during the pandemic. More than 1.5 million cases were reported in the first week of 2021. That means nearly 156 Americans are testing positive every single minute. Los Angeles recorded its deadliest day as images surfaced of doctors storing bodies in those refrigeration trucks. The mayor of L.A. is now begging for federal help and more vaccines. And just as we sent doctors to New York and PPE to other parts of the country early on when they were peaking, this is our peak. President-elect Joe Biden said he is planning to ramp up vaccinations by releasing available vials immediately instead of holding second doses back.